Another big event coming up here in Battle Creek, and it's the Spring Fling. And uh, we have Dr. Randy Mudge with us right now to, uh, to, to tell us all about that. Well, thank you for having me as a, as a guest. So the Spring Fling has been going on for 11 years, and it's really a partnership between the Cancer Center in Battle Creek and community leaders, the American Cancer Society, and uh, the Calhoun County um, Coalition to uh, Prevent uh, Cancer. And it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful program. Um, as you can appreciate, there's nothing um, worse than being diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. And what we do is we use the funds from the event uh, to help support our patients. Um, you know, some patients have transportation needs. Um, patients cannot afford their, their medication. So all the money raised at this event goes directly to um, help those in our, in our community who are dealing with this dreadful uh, disease so that they can be um, successful in their fight against uh, cancer. You see, you see it from every angle, uh, Dr. Mudge, of course, you know, from the x-rays and uh, all the medical stuff, but you also see how the lifestyle, uh, the, the stress, you know, and we, we, we always hear how stress can exacerbate the, uh, the disease and make it so much more difficult. It, it must be hard, you know, to see that, you know, people, you know, trying to fight cancer, trying to keep their family together, trying to keep a job, all this stuff. Uh, it, it's just, I can't even imagine how difficult that can be. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tremendously, um, difficult and, um, and, you know, so if you put yourself in the, in the shoes, of someone who even has greater stress because maybe they don't have a um, home that they can go to on a, a regular basis or they do not have a car or they can't afford gas. So in addition to all the other stresses that a uh, person goes through, um, some of our individuals in the community just really have um, an extremely um, difficult um, time even getting the the basics so that they can get uh, therapy and and this is what it's what it's all about and I think that's why this event has been so successful and it's growing over the years is because um, people realize um, that there's a um, individuals in the community who are in need and they really want to um, step in and, and help and one of the things where we've done that's new over the last couple years is in addition to attending the spring fling on uh, May 10th at Firekeepers Casino, there's also opportunities to buy a raffle ticket mm -hmm. um, and you can do that right now. And those funds are um, again going to benefit patients and if you are lucky and you win the raffle, um, you get a uh, Toyota Camry uh, two-year lease, courtesy of Sunshine Toyota. Oh, excellent. I'm on my way over there this afternoon. You know, Gary uh, and Sunshine Toyota are going to host our uh, roof sit this summer for the homeless shelter. <laughs> They're into everything, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they do. They do a lot of great work for the community. So maybe I'll have to stop at the bank on my way and uh, get a ticket from Gary over there. They're, they are selling them at Sunshine Toyota, I take it. Yes, there there are actually several ways to be able to um, buy the raffle tickets. Actually, tonight, um, April 23rd, um, from 5 to 7, Jake Way Realtors will be at uh, Lakeview High School. Oh. Um, and the Toyota Camry will be on display, and they'll be selling um, raffle tickets there. Wednesday, May 1st, from 5 to 7 at uh, Sunshine Toyota, we're going to have uh, an event. And Thursday, May 2nd, from noon to 4 o'clock at the Bronson Battle Creek Cancer Center, the Camry will be on uh, display and we'll be selling uh, tickets there also. But I do want to stress that outside of uh, these events, um, if you stop into King Jewelers, Jake Way, Sunshine Toyota, or the Cancer Center, you would be able to buy uh, a raffle ticket at any time that uh, those businesses are open. You know, I wish I didn't have to say this, but probably just about everybody within earshot of my voice has had some experience with a family member or even themselves uh, with cancer. 
Um, so they know, you know, how important this is to have a support system so that when people do, you know, have to go through treatment, they've got all the help they can get. And that's what the spring fling and that's what this coalition has been all about. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, cancer does touch um, practically everyone in the community in one way or another because it is such a common disease. I mean, nowadays, one out of nine women um, will be diagnosed with uh, breast cancer during their, their lifetime. And the number of men diagnosed with prostate cancer is very um, similar to that. Um, so it's a, unfortunately a very common um, disease. Something I wonder about a lot, uh, and we're, we're talking with Dr. Randy Mudge of the Bronson Oncology and Hematology Specialists, uh, and, and you've been here in, in this community for years now. Seven, 17 years. 17 years fighting cancer here in our community. Uh, and I just wonder about this all the time. Is this... Is cancer something that's just always been prevalent, but either we didn't have the opportunity or the tools to diagnose it, or we called it something else, or, or are we seeing a higher incidence of it in this day and age than ever before? So, you know, that's a, that's a great question. So cancer has always been prevalent, but the difference why we're seeing more of it is because of the aging of the population. By and large, individuals who are diagnosed with cancer tend to be older, so in their 60s or 70s. Certainly, unfortunately, we do have younger patients, but most patients are older. And because of having antibiotics, clean water, um, excellent uh, surgical techniques, um, advances in, in medicine across the board, people are living longer and longer lives. So they're living longer. So on what that means is that as they live longer, um, there's a greater chance that they may get a cancer during their, during their lifetime. How are we doing in the fight? What's the latest? Oh, uh, well, this is the this is the fantastic uh, story that unfortunately has not gotten a lot of uh, press outside of the cancer um, community, but this was uh, released earlier um, this year. And uh, the cancer death rate is uh, down by 26% wow. between 1991 and 2015. So that's a huge decrease when you look at the death rate being down um, that much. And, you know, as a frame of reference, I'm 54 years old and I finished medical school at University of Michigan in 1991. So it's really during the 24, 25 years of my um, career that we've seen this uh, dramatic uh, um, decrease in the death rate. And it's estimated that in the next uh, 15 years, um, that we could possibly get that death rate down by possibly even 50%, um, percent, which if that comes to fruition, that would be huge for the patients that we uh, take care of and those who are diagnosed with cancer. And, and I'm, I'm guessing that we're talking about just uh, great advances in, in treatment options and technology and everything. Um, when we talk about that, is it is it different for different types of cancer? I mean, we don't have we made a dent in cancer as a whole, or do we just kind of chip away at different types? Well, that's a that's a great question. So the answer is the when you look at the overall death rate falling, that's looking at cancer as a as a whole. Mm -hmm. But the way we've been winning that battle is by finding solutions to treat one cancer. Um, at a time. And that's largely done through research and clinical trials where we look at um, new drugs and new approaches to cancer treatment. Um, one of the big things that's happened recently over the last several years is the use of targeted therapy. So it used to be someone was diagnosed with an advanced uh, cancer, we would treat them with standard chemotherapy. So that's kind of like using a a shotgun approach because the um, chemotherapy would kill the cancer cells, but unfortunately would also um, affect the normal tissues in the process of doing so. Nowadays, we have a new um, philosophy and technology has allowed us to do this where we can actually um, target 
receptors on the cancer cells. So receptors are kind of like, if you think about boating, kind of like a, a dock, if you will. Oh, okay. And so cancer cells have different receptors or different docks that are unique to them. So if you tie a drug to one of the um, uh, molecules or one of the boats that's going into the dock, then that boat or molecule will deliver that cancer agent right to that cancer cell. And the advantage to that is it's selective um, therapy so that uh, we can kill the cancer cell while having minimal effect on the normal um, tissues. And in fact, I'm, the, um, I'm a radiation oncologist by trade but I'm the medical director for the cancer center, so I review the new drugs that have come out. And in the last three to four years, there have been more new drugs that have come on the market than at any time um, previously during my career. Dr. Randy Mudge is with us from Bronson. We're talking about cancer advances and treatments, and also the spring fling and a big event that's the uh, what well, is it? The 11th or 12th annual? It, it's the 11th. 11th annual. Uh, coming up at Fire Keepers, and uh, there's also a raffle, and, and all of this helps people who are undergoing cancer treatment to try and streamline that, make it a little easier, you know, transportation you mentioned, and uh, uh, medical medicine costs and that sort of thing, right? Yes, and, and in addition, we also have a um, technology that uh, for some patients will help to prevent uh, hair loss, and that also is funded by the, by the monies that we raise and that's uh, for a lot of patients uh, the ability to be able to preserve their their hair is uh, of uh, major um, importance. What causes that hair loss in uh, cancer treatment? It, it's basically from uh, chemotherapy or radiation affects the uh, hair follicles so that they stop uh, producing the, the hair and the hair loss is uh, temporary but uh, you know, in some patients, it can be an issue for, you know, many, uh, many months. Mm -hmm. Is that getting any less prevalent as a result of new treatments? Yeah, some of the, as we were talking about earlier with some of the targeted uh, therapies, because they're targeted to specific receptors on the cancer cells, they do not affect the uh, <coughs> hair follicles. We were talking a little bit about uh, advances in treatment, new treatment techniques for prostate and lung cancer. Yeah, so there's really been two big advances over the last uh, couple years um, concerning radiation treatment. So one of the big ones is with lung cancer. There's a technique called SBRT, which essentially is using very high doses of radiation and only a couple, um, and you only give a couple treatments, usually three to five. And uh, the results with that are actually just as good with as uh, doing surgery according to clinical trials. So we use this technique a lot in patients who have a high surgical um, risk or who are um, who are older and cannot uh, tolerate surgery. And with the technique, patients have minimal um, side effects. And again, the outcomes are equivalent to surgery. One of the reasons we've been able to adopt this technique is because with uh, modern um, computers, we're actually able to compensate for tumor motion because the body is not static. Things move around. And nowadays, when we're treating a cancer, we can actually track its motion so that when the radiation beam is on, we make sure we're continually hitting um, the, the cancer and not wasting uh, treatment or exposing normal tissues to radiation that uh, is unnecessary. Let's uh, recap the uh, spring fling again. There are two ways that you can help, um, or you could do both. Uh, one is the car raffle, and that's a two-year lease uh, on a Toyota from Sunshine Toyota. $50 for a raffle ticket? That's correct. And how many are they going to sell? Uh, the goal is to sell uh, 500. So a 1 in 500 chance of having a new car for a couple of years. That's pretty good odds. And then you also get the satisfaction of knowing that yeah, you're doing your part to uh, keep our community strong and help people who are fighting cancer. Uh, I, I like that, and uh, so I've got to stop by the bank on my way over to Sunshine today. But if you can't get over to Sunshine Toyota right away, there are other ways that you can buy a ticket. Yes, the Brunson Battle Creek uh, Cancer Center, King Jewelers, and uh, Jakeway uh, Realtors.
and some special events uh, coming up. In fact, uh, today uh, at, at Jakeway Realtors, uh, or they're going to be at uh, Lakeview High School. Though. Correct. Yeah, five to seven. Uh, Sunshine, the big event, May 1st on uh, Wednesday. That's from 5 to 7 as well. Correct. And then uh, Thursday, May 2nd, noon to 4 at the Bronson Battle Creek Cancer Care Center. And uh, But the uh, the big, big event is going to be at Fire Keepers. Tell us a little more about that. Yes, yeah, so you can, uh, individuals can buy um, tables to attend the Fire Keepers uh, Casino uh, gala, so it's a table of eight, and the table costs uh, seven hundred uh, fifty uh, fifty dollars, and it's a nice uh, event. Uh, the f dinner is included. Um, you get a uh, drink ticket for a couple of adult uh, beverages. Uh, there's a silent uh, auction that occurs, and there's a lot of uh, great. Uh, um, great items within that auction, and there's also a opportunity to participate in a jewelry uh, raffle. Neat. What's the easiest way or best way to uh, get a table, get signed up, and be part of that uh, spring fling? Well, you can you can uh, buy uh, tickets at uh, any of the uh, businesses that uh, we've mentioned uh, previously, mm -hmm. and certainly if you have any uh, questions. Um, you can call the uh, Cancer Center um, in uh, Battle Creek, um, or um, you can go to um, the bronsonfoundation.com uh, slash uh, spring fling. There you go, bronsonfoundation.com, spring fling link, and uh, get everything you need there. And, uh, you know, we got to have you on here more often, Dr. Mudge. You know, you got this good news about cancer treatment and uh, even just knowing that we are making advances uh, not only has got to be a huge deal for anybody afflicted but even people you know who haven't yet that are thinking you know in the back of their mind you know this could be me I'm glad there's help out there I'm glad that the research is making advances yeah I, I appreciate the uh, the opportunity and I think uh, um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes good news doesn't uh, doesn't get out there, and it's nice to be able to come on the radio and, and share that with you that there is uh, there is hope, and we are making uh, progress fighting this disease. You're welcome anytime, Dr. Randy Mudge, Bronson Oncology and Hematology Specialist. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.